So there's so many questions that that you know people don't ask. They just keep repeating the same story. And just here on Wikipedia, it says Planets a Romanesque keep is the oldest part of the castle, having begun in the ninth century as a simple manor with an earthen palisade. Okay, so let's go to this one, Berg Elts. And it says, the development of the medieval castle, which we admire, you know, they put up a few more words, which we admire so much today. And the fortifications began in the ninth or 10th century, what used to be a small manor house surrounded by earthworks and palisades. So, so I mean, they've done a good job that they've read it and they've, you know, um, embellished it a bit, made it sound a bit better. Uh, this one here, another one uh, on Elts Castle. And it says the development of medieval castles, which we admire so much today. Oh my gosh, that was straight off the last one. Because of their beauty, began in the 9th or 10th century with what used to be a small manor house surrounded by earthworks and palisades. Okay, so th that, that's word for word what, <laughs> what's on this one. And they are just a rewrite, uh, you know, just an embellishment of what's here on Wikipedia. So this is the problem. No one's looking into any different angles. No one's asking any questions. They're just repeating this story. And so everyone believes it. And we get these people and they read all the books and they, you know, memorize all the dates and all the facts and all the names. Um, and they, you know, they think that they're these very well-educated people, but they never stop and think, you know, is this fact? Can I prove this? Where's the evidence? And, and this is the problem. And this is what we're jumping into. So... And so this is a castle called Berg Elts in Germany. And it says that Elts Castle is considered the German Knights Castle par excellence. It has remained in the possession of the original family and was never destroyed. Its history is a wealth of myths and events, famous personalities and great art. Uh, here are some of the uh, more interesting dates of this castle and basically says uh, it was developed you know the development started between the 9th and 10th century so they're not really sure right that's 100 years and basically it says it, it started as a small house surrounded by earthworks and palisades now how do they know this um, you know we've got no references here they just tell us a story so it really is just his story uh, in the year 1157, the Emperor Frederick I of Barbarossa issued a deed of donation, which was signed and sealed by Rudolf von Elts as one of the witnesses. At this time, he resided in a small castle complex next to the Elts Bark. Parts of the first castle, such as the Romanesque Keep Platt, Etz, <laughs> and four stories of the former Romanesque Palace, today integrated with the chemic houses can still be seen today. Uh, they probably oldest painted chimney in Germany and a recently discovered painted window arch also date from this period. Recently discovered painted window arch, so it must have been buried. In 1300, the tower keep, uh, today referred as Klein Roddendorf, to the north of the keep was probably, was probably built for the, uh, Theodoric the Zoo Elts. <laughs> um, so they don't even know, right? This is, this is the thing. To the north, it was probably built around this time for this person, but they don't know between 1290 and 1300. So again, they give us a story, but there's no facts. There's no evidence, you know, related to this. There's no bibliography. Uh, and they just tell us stories, but even in the story, they just they tell us they don't know. The Lords of Elts confronted the Archbishop and they ended up um, getting into a war. <laughs> and 1331 to 1336, the Lords of Elts confronted the Archbishop of Trier, uh, Baldwin of Luxembourg's expansion politics 
by forming an alliance with neighbouring castles and so-called the Elts Feud. In 1331, the confrontation saw the first documented cannon attack north of the Alps. So 1300s, they're saying they had cannons and they were doing cannon attacks on this castle. Uh, when this proved to be ineffective, though, <laughs> Bowden uh, erected a siege castle. Okay, so they're, ha they're having a siege. They're, they're using cannons at this castle. They're having no effect. So this archbishop decides to build a castle. Now, how long does it take to build a castle? Who's building it? Where are the materials coming from? You know, when you're in a war, don't you need all the men for soldiers? Because a castle is a big undertaking. Uh, so it says he erected a siege castle, the Trutzelts, the ruin of which can still be seen today, from where he besieged Elts Castle with catapults and heavy stone balls for many years. So years and years they're throwing stuff at this castle and not obviously not being very effective. The Knights of Elts finally gave up in 1336. As a result of this defeat, most of the fortifications had to be demolished, leaving the castle as no more than a fortified residence. So that's the story. So they're saying it was fortified, so they're talking walls uh, and that they all got demolished. And, of course, you may notice that there's <laughs> a few double threes around here. It actually says that the family who currently inhabit the castle are the 33rd generation of the Elts family. And then it just goes down here. Uh, the top two stories of the roof and the houses were added here. They added a staircase. And basically they tell us that all these castles were built over hundreds of years, sometimes a thousand years. Each generation or a few generations, they add on another building. They do something else. They change it a bit more. And then we end up with these castles that we see today. And we end up with castles that look not like they were built, you know, higgledy-piggledy, not like they were um, not planned and they were just added onto and added onto. They, these castles look like they were built and designed as we see them. That there's really not much that would make you think that a castle like this you know, started off with this middle bit, then they added this bit, then they added this bit. It, it just doesn't look like a higgledy-piggledy um, construction, does it? You can see there's been a bit of repairs and a bit of discolouring down here. A few things have been painted, maybe to look, make them look different, but all the stonework is the same. And another thing I want to point out is that we have all these different sites. You know, when you do a search for Elts Castle, you'll find, you know, quite a few different sites and blogs that are talking about it. But the thing is, and, and this is the problem with history or his story, is when you're researching it, the only way you can really research it is to go through the books and what's already been told. And so what you end up with is all these different sites and blogs, and they just say the same thing because there's only one narrative. And, and we, um, you know, no one's looking into any other questions. They're not looking into, you know, was it even possible, you know, to build a castle like this, you know, out in the hills of Germany uh, in the year sort of 1100, 1200, these massive structures. We, we know they had no tools. They didn't have steam power, definitely no electric power. This is what, what we're told um, is they just had hand tools, you know, chisels and, and mallets. And, you know, um, as for the height aspect, how were they lifting these blocks? You know, they didn't have cranes back then. They might, may have had sort of, you know, some kind of pulleys and rope pulleys, but when you look at the size of the blocks, you know, how much could they really lift? And it's all with manpower, no machinery. This castle, the Castle of Elts, let's go and uh, check it out on Google Earth. All right, so here we go, inside the castle and I mean look at this it's literally like a town like an old you know what we're told are medieval towns interesting how they've covered this and they've just left all these bricks uncovered um, and of course this is probably the same material as this 
and got this covered. It said built at a later date. Um, but as you can see, everything is built in. You know, all these arches are the same. Everything fits perfectly. Don't think this was built randomly. Now look at this. Can you see that? That's a doorway or a window that's been filled in. Of course, underneath another window. So probably a bit buried. <laughs> um, okay. So here's part of the rock just sticking up through the floor. And, oh gosh, is that, I'm not sure if that's my screen or if that's these steps, see how they get bigger out here? I'm not sure what that is. Um, now this, this, this is all to do with something we'll get into. I won't get too much into it in this video, but um, there's a, a phenomena of melted buildings, which we see a lot on these, in these old constructions, but they look like they're built in literally into the rock into um and that they're like melted into the rocks so here we are on a walkway as we can see i mean look at that fairy tale castle <laughs> straight out of a fairy tale right um just a random tower sticking up out of the forest here just letting us know there's lower levels right and i mean just look at the amount of work and material and rock that's just gone into this little bridge and this stairway. I mean, that's a massive, massive um, construction effort, it really is. So there you go, a bit of a look at Elts Castle, sitting there in Germany, huge, massive, on a hill, walls popping out of the ground here, Got these old constructions. There's another wall on this side uh, down here, or maybe that's the, the walkway. But huge, you know, just constructions everywhere. And uh, yeah, built with horse and cart, no tools, you know, pretty much unskilled labour. Um, you know, they, they didn't really have architects and civil engineers and all this stuff. Or so they tell us back then. But they happen to build. Um, constructions that are far superior to anything that we could even conceive of today.